Left Peru and sailed to England alone. There he met the Browns and they took him home. Now a new life has begun. He's Windsor Gardens' favorite son. Cause he always does his best to help everyone. When a problem appears, he never misses a beat. And always finds a way to land on his feet. Has his very own unique point of view. Looks at everything as if it's brand new. He is friendly and polite. And he tries to do things right. But he gets in sticky messes just the same. He's curious and speaks his mind, but trouble's never far behind. It's Paddington Bear, he's one of a kind. I'm Paddington Bear. Blasted leaves. Good afternoon, Mr. Curry. And where have you been, Bear? I've been helping Mr. Gruber with a birthday party he gave for one of his oldest neighbors, Mrs. Pummel. Birthday party? <laughs> Lot of nonsense. Oh, no, Mr. Curry. We played games and there was a big cake with over 60 candles and lots of sandwiches, but no marmalade ones, I'm afraid, in case Mrs. Pummel got sticky. Nobody ever gave me a birthday party. But I think I know how to get one. <laughs> There. Hmm. There. Let me give you a hand. Pardon, Mr. Curry. What did you say? Well, that's what being neighbourly is all about. Besides, I finished doing mine yesterday. This is very nice of you, Mr. Curry. You're finished already, Paddington. Mr. Curry, help me, Mrs. Bird. We'll do the shopping, Mrs. B. You go and have a nice cup of tea and put your feet up. Mrs. B? Well, I never. <sighs> I could carry some of those, Mr. Oh, Curry. If you don't mind, Bear, I'm not as young as I used to be. In fact, my birthday is coming up in two days. Is it really, Mr. Curry? Yes. I expect you'll be having a party then. No, Bear. I've never had a proper birthday party. Never in your whole life? <laughs> never. A party for Mr Curry? I've heard everything now. He's never had one because he's so mean. He helped me rake the leaves today. I went shopping for Mrs Bird. That he did? Really? Perhaps he's reformed. Leave it to me, everyone. Bears are good at arranging things. I wonder how old Mr. Curry is. Perhaps we'd better not have any candles in case we set fire to the house. Who's bothering me at this hour? I'll give them a piece of my mind. Hello, Paddington. Come in. Let me get you a marmalade sandwich. Thank you, Mr. Curry. Oh. Here you are, Paddington. Oh dear, I nearly dropped this photograph of you, Mr. Curry. That's not me. That's my mother. You have a mother? Of course I've got a mother. Everyone has a mother. Mrs. Bird always says you can't have had one. Mr. Curry, I have a nice surprise for you. The Browns and I are going to give you a birthday party. <gasps> Really? Now there's a coincidence. It just so happens I keep a little list of things. Games, food, decorations. Just in case anyone is ever kind enough to take pity on me. It seems a very long list, Mr. Curry. Especially for someone who's never ever had a party. Yes, the party's the day after tomorrow at number 32 Windsor Gardens. Thank you. Goodbye. Well, I've invited everyone now. Even Mrs. Curry's coming. What a nice surprise it'll be for Mr. Curry. His mother at his birthday party. I didn't even know Curry had a mother. Bear? Bear! What took you so long, Bear? We've got to get a move on. Birthday party shopping to do. Mm. 
if you ask me, it's a good job Mr. Curry isn't a bear, or he'd have two birthdays a year. I've never met this Mr. Curry, but I heard there would be cake. When Paddington said he'd invited everyone, I didn't think he meant literally. He's coming. Quiet, everyone. Happy birthday, Mr. Curry! Oh, thank you. You're all too kind. Too kind. Maybe you are right, Paddington. Maybe this party will make a new and better man of Mr. Curry. They wanted me to join a circus when I was a lad. <laughs> <laughs> to pick up after the elephants. <laughs> 1965, or was it 1966? No, I think it was 65, the year of the big snowstorm. Snow up to your armpits. Snow, snow, what a storm. Snow drift. Hey! And I've never had a single dance lesson. At least Mr. Curry's having a good time. He's a jolly good fellow, for he's a jolly good fellow, for he's a jolly good fellow. And so say all of us. Happy birthday, Mr. Curry. Reginald. No one told me this was your birthday party, which is hardly surprising because it's not your birthday. You've been up to your old tricks again? Mother. Huh? Fooling all these nice people. I'm ashamed of you, Reginald. But... Come along! But I, I can explain. Mother. What do you want, Bear? Is your mother sleeping? Come down. I brought these for you, but it's not my birthday. Perhaps you could be like me, and this could be your second birthday. What a good idea, and thank you very much. It was a lovely party. Yes, it was. Reginald! <laughs> I'd like to welcome you all to the third annual Catch Nessie Contest. Thank goodness we got here in time, Mr. Gruber. Our past uh, exploits have not exactly been successful. I hope this year one of you will receive the prize for the winning photograph. Good luck to all. A photograph of the Loch Ness Monster would make a wonderful addition to your book, The World and Its Wonders. Perhaps we could train it to look at the camera and say cheese. I wouldn't hold out too much hope, Mr. Brown. I, like many other people, do not believe that Nessie even exists. So, an unbeliever in our midst. Well, I'll bring you proof. McSwiddle's the name, and I'll get you a clear shot of that monster. It's time you got busy, Mr. Brown. Good luck. And good luck to you too, Mr. Max Whittle. I'll have luck, all right. <laughs> you have to make your own luck in this world. <laughs> Perfect. Ready? Set. I've got it. I've got a picture of Nessie. 
Contest for sure. Unless... It seems as though we may have a winner here. That photograph is a fake. <gasps> oh. Oh. And I have proof. I found this tucked away behind some bushes. Not our monster. Do you mean I was tricked? I wonder which one of us pulled such an underhanded scheme. I declare this entry null and void. Let the contest continue. Perhaps you will have better luck tomorrow, Mr. Brown. So don't be disheartened. I'm not, Mr. Gruber. Aunt Lucy taught me that if at first you don't succeed, try, try again. I'm sure the Loch Ness Monster won't be able to resist some extra chunky marmalade. Uh, can't say I've ever seen a better looking monster. <laughs> like it. So it's only a matter of time for word to get round and for Nessie to come looking for some. Ah! Oh, look! Not so fast there, Nessie! I've got a bite! I've caught the Loch Ness Monster! Oh, no! I've deflated Nessie! It's another fake! Oh. I should have used this from the start. Oh. Nothing can ruin my plans this time. Thank you for joining me, Mr. Gruber. You keep your eyes open for Nessie, Mr. Brown, and I'll watch for the person responsible for all these fakes. Mr. Gruber, look over there. It's going very fast. Hold on, Mr. Brown. Don't lose her. I saw it. It went over there. Mud Swiddle, you are a genius. This way. <laughs> It's changing course, Mr. Gruber. My remote control is ruined. And I didn't even have a chance to get a picture. Ahem. I mean, uh, oh, uh, how did this get here? Now it's coming straight at us. I've got you this time. Oh! 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 The... Mr. Brown! Oh, no. I'll never get a picture of you if you don't slow down! Run for it! She's heading for sure! Oh, no. oh, no. Oh, hurry! Oh. Excuse us, Mr. McSwiggle! Oh. I thought sea serpents lived underwater. Who would have thought? I hope I got a good picture. Mr. McSwiddle, I have to say that I am extremely disappointed. Wait, everybody, sight... wait. I think we may have won the prize, Mr. Gruber. Mr. Brown, thank goodness you're all right. I'm afraid I have some bad news for you. You see, your Nessie was another fake. I was riding a fake sea monster. Yes, those pictures are clearly of the fake monster. This one isn't. Hmm. That's not my monster, I can assure you. And it seems to have a strange lump on its back. That's not a lump. It's one of my jars. Do you think it really is the Loch Ness Monster, Mr. Brown? 
I'm not sure, Mr. Gruber. But whatever it is, it certainly took a fancy to my marmalade. Mrs. Brown, Mrs. Bird, come quickly. I think we've had burglars. Oh! I'm afraid it's Henry, the poor dear. He had to stay up all night working on some important papers. They're for a takeover bid. His corporation is trying to buy another large company. Well, he's not going to be doing much taking over of anything if he doesn't hurry up and get to work. Paddington, go and see what's keeping him. He'll be late. Mr. Brown, Mrs. Brown asked me to see what's keeping you. Mr. Brown, are you in there? You're getting your pyjamas all wet. Oh. Uh. <sighs> cold, cold, cold. Ah, oh, good. I can tell Mrs. Brown you're awake now. Thank you for helping Henry get ready for work, Paddington. He's a little out of sorts today. That's one way of putting it. <laughs> <Let's>, ah! <laughs> I'm not sure I understand what a takeover bid is, Mr. Brown, but I hope you have a good one. Oh, I shall be glad when it's over, Paddington. My boss has been driving me crazy for weeks now. It's all in here, and today's the day. Ah, that must be the taxi. I'll get you an umbrella. Ooh. Goodbye, Mr. Brown. Have a nice day. Uh-oh. Mr. Brown's forgotten his envelope. Well, I'll just telephone his office to tell him I'm bringing it. It shouldn't be too difficult. This isn't happening to me. I can't believe I left it at home. Mr. Brown, you have a message and the chair... No time for that now, Stephanie. I forgot to bring in the takeover bid. The chairman is in your office. Brown? What's all this about you leaving the takeover bid at home? This is a growth potential day, Brown. This deal will net 70% the first quarter with sublinear forecasts for the next half. No, Sir Humphrey. D I mean, yes, Sir Humphrey. D I mean... Our client will be coming in at 11 o'clock. So I expect the presentation on my desk by a quarter to at the latest. Don't worry, Sir Humphrey. <laughs> you see, it's being delivered here by my personal courier. I hope this courier is reliable. Oh, he's very reliable. It'll be safe in his paws. I mean... I've got some important papers for Mr. Brown. Third floor, suite 319, mail room. It's very busy here at the moment. Please send someone down to help with the mail. <clears throat> oh, that was fast. I have to give this to Mr. Brown. Deliver it to him personally, mate, along with all the other mail, all right? And hurry back after you're done. I'll find something else for you to do. Mr. Brown must be very important to get everyone's mail. <sighs> well, this place isn't very busy. Not anymore. Can I help you, Mr. Brown? I'm waiting for a courier. Well, he's not really a courier. He's actually a bear and... Well, he went up to the mailroom about ten minutes ago. Here's the morning mail and Mr. Brown's takeover bid. Oh, you must be the reliable courier Mr. Brown was talking about. Reliable? I don't think Mr. Brown's ever called me that before. I shall have to thank him. Hello? Oh, Stephanie. <laughs> Mr. Brown, yes, I sent him up to the mailroom. How was I to know that bear is not an employee? Hello? It's for you. Yes? You've got it. She's got it. And that bear's gonna get it. Mr. 
Mr. Brown's office? Yes, Sir Humphrey. You'll be able to find Mr. Brown in the mailroom. Goodbye. <laughs> Hello, I'm back. Oh, these machines look interesting. I wonder what they do. I wonder if it does faces too. I can make some for the Browns and Aunt Lucy. Hello, service. I need ten collated copies of this, and immediately. I'll get on to it right away. Uh -oh. Who would have thought working in an office could be so much fun? Why isn't anyone ever where they are supposed to be? A job well done, if you ask me. There you are. There you are. There you are. Where's my takeover bid? Where's my takeover bid? What takeover bid? This takeover bid. I've just finished making the copies. And who are you? I'm Paddington Brown. Oh. And thank you for saying I'm reliable, Mr. Brown. Well, I can't disagree with that. When our client sees this young bear's face on our proposal, he'll know we mean business. After all, they do make toys and teddy bears. But tell me, however did you get the idea? Well, you see, Sir Humphrey, it's, well, it's a... Um... It's a long story. <laughs> <laughs>